Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. An invasion of privacy at a local spa. A couple makes a shocking discovery inside a hot tub room. A couple says they found a hidden camera inside of that room. Happened at the Oasis Hot Tub Gardens on South State Street in Ann Arbor. The couple spotted the camera. They've been sitting down with our Jacqueline Francis, and she's live with more tonight. They are trying to track down this video, Jacqueline. Devin and Kimberly, the couple got police involved right away. But first, I want to show you just how tiny this camera was. It was about this size, and it, so really, it's incredible. The couple even spotted the camera in the first place. This is, this is a camera. This is not a screw. Caught on camera, or so it would seem. No, it just looks like whatever. Like a piece of Lego or something. A Lego. It wasn't a Lego. It was a camera. It's not a screw. Why would you touch that? I told them, can you please not touch it? The police are on their way, but the manager came and popped the camera lens out. And it's clearly a camera. The Dearborn Heights couple didn't want to show their face on camera, but they do want their story out there. They rented a private room Sunday at Oasis Hot Tub Gardens in Ann Arbor. Two hours later, when it was time to get out, his wife spotted something wedged into one of the statues. It was a camera, a little camera, like tip of my finger. They took this video as the manager pushed the camera out with a screwdriver. Police arrived soon after and a report was filed. I've never been that terrified in my life. I've never seen things like that in real life. And that's my wife, you know, like I'm very, we're Muslim. He says it's their reputation on the line should that footage be leaked. The general manager told them the camera wasn't recording, but without knowing who put it there, police couldn't give them that same reassurance. I would hate for anything to come out there, honestly, because we should be safe. You know, we're in a private area. We reached out to the manager multiple times, but have not heard back. Ann Arbor Police is investigating, but they do not have any suspects at this time. Reporting live, I'm Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Oh boy, all right, Jacqueline. All right, we're following some breaking news right now from Taylor, where police are investigating a shooting at a Northwest Park. Happened with a confrontation between people in a car and others on a basketball court. Neighbors tell us one person was shot. We're waiting on additional information from Taylor Police. As soon as we have it, we'll bring it to you. The desperate search for the missing submersible sent to explore the Titanic wreckage is entering now a very critical time. Only nine hours left in the oxygen supply on board. At least that's the estimate. The rescue efforts are growing. The U.S. Coast Guard says the search area is now approximately twice the size of the area of, of the state of Connecticut. So a lot of ground to cover while the sub search uh, the subsurface search is up to two and a half miles deep. So searching both directions is complicated. Early this morning, consistent banging noises were picked up, giving everyone hope that those crew members might still be alive and that a rescue might be possible. The exact location and source of the sounds, though, has still not been determined. What's it really like inside one of those submersibles as it takes hours to go down thousands of feet. One Metro Detroiter knows, and our Mara McDonald talked to one man, and Mara, he can, can he even fathom the idea of being inside that cramped space for this many days? The short answer is no, and he's gonna explain exactly what it's like in one of those submersibles in just a second. But more so than that, he thinks that likely these people have been dead since they lost contact, likely because they had a catastrophic pressure problem. The fate of the Titanic has fascinated the world since 1912. Then James Cameron came along and made a blockbuster complete with underwater footage captured from a Russian MER submersible. Mike Fish took that same voyage on that same MER in 2000. It is six feet in diameter and it's a round globe that you're in. Fish, who is a Metro Detroiter, is a lawyer by day and is no stranger to adventure. He's a mountain climbing enthusiast, loves to jump out of planes. And all of that said, the Titanic expedition was at a different level. But when they closed it, cranked it for the last time, that's when I went, okay, we're doing this. What he saw going down all 12,000 feet was what those on board Ocean Gate's Titan saw complete darkness unless the exterior lights would turn on and we've saw some extremely 
unbelievable creatures that I had never heard about before. The Titan was lost before it ever reached the bottom, a trip that takes about two and a half hours. When you do reach that depth and see the wall of that ship, it inspires two things according to Fish, awe and reverence. Once we hit the railing, we, would, we came around to the bow section, which is the iconic view of the Titanic always. And it was um, unbelievably moving, understanding that at least I recognized it as a burial site. Some people don't, but I recognized it as a burial site and I was very cognizant of that. Some parts of the Titanic are beautiful, in great condition. The windows are not broken. Um, some are in terrible condition. After watching all of this unfold, I asked Mike, you know, does it give you second thoughts about your trip? You know, would you ever want to do it again? And he said it doesn't give him second thoughts, that that Titanic expedition was an absolute trip of a lifetime. Um, by the way, what's next for him? Climbing Kilimanjaro. We're downtown. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Bring up next time instead of down. All right, Mara. New at 11, two people are hurt after a glider crash in Livingston County. Sky 4 over the scene near Unadilla Road, Unadilla Township. Police say the glider made an emergency landing. We are working to learn more about the two victims who were on board and their conditions. Also new at 11, a man is dead after being hit by a car on Detroit's east side. It happened around 5 o'clock this evening in the area of Savage and Van Dyke. Police say the man ran into the street and was then hit. The driver did stay at the scene of the crash. A man's behind bars tonight for approaching an officer at a Taylor gas station and telling him that he had killed his girlfriend. Shooting happened at the Telwick Hotel near the intersection of Telegraph and Wick Roads. Taylor police say the man left the hotel in his girlfriend's vehicle and saw a Michigan State police officer at the BP gas station at Goddard, Goddard and Telegraph, and it was there that he told the officer he killed his girlfriend, stemming over a disagreement with his longtime girlfriend and the gentleman approached him and uh, told him I need you to arrest me I just killed my girlfriend and uh, I think he was a little bit surprised by that statement police found a 40 caliber semi-automatic handgun in the motel with a murdered woman he's expected to appear in court by the end of this week Family of a man shot to death by a Roseville police officer has now filed a wrongful death suit. Happened in April of 2022. Police say Frank Robles crashed head on into a truck on Grossbeck near 12 Mile and stumbled out of his vehicle with a knife in his hand. Officer Chad Lee ordered him to drop the knife and open fire when Robles refused and took steps toward him. The officer was cleared of any criminal wrongdoing, but Robles' wife now argues her dead husband's civil rights were violated. The family seeking damages in excess of $10 million. We called Roseville police for comment, but they have not made one yet. Police agencies teaming up tonight to tackle car thefts in Metro Detroit. Investigators tell us car thefts are up about 30% since last year. Detroit, Dearborn Heights, Garden City, Livonia, Dearborn, and Michigan State Police all working together in this new task force. Officers say auto theft is a top priority because that crime has a huge impact on the lives of victims. These crimes are against the people in our families, people that take their kids to school, their loved ones to a hospital or to a medical appointment, people that drive to work every day in the morning to improve their families' lives and their communities. When you take someone's means of transportation away, it's an attack on both their lives and their livelihoods. Wayne County Prosecutor's Office will assign a single prosecutor to handle all task force cases. Michigan's high court says it will hear a case involving minimum wage and sick leave and lawmakers' ability to interfere with petition drives. If the court rules a certain way, it could put more money in the pockets of low-wage workers, especially in the restaurant industry. Uh, the case started back in 2018 when advocates submitted enough signatures to raise the minimum wage to $12 an hour by 2022, and the Republican-controlled legislature adopted the changes. But a few months later, they watered them down.